Are you gonna testify against Trump? Are you gonna testify against Trump? The Orleans Juvenile Justice Intervention Center attacks a guard and steals a key card in an attempt to escape. And that's according to the NOPD. And we're told the incident happened Thursday, but wasn't reported by JJIC officials until just before noon on Saturday. And police say the 18 year old inmate assaulted the guard and stole an access key card, but was apprehended during an attempt to flee that facility. And the inmate's name was not disclosed at this time, nor was the condition of the guard. And the suspect will be charged with robbery and battery of a correctional officer. New tonight on this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend, a conversation about juvenile crime in Washington, D.C. The police chief, a new attorney general, new deputy mayor for public safety, and the community sharing their perspective on how to make the city safer. Fox 5's David Kaplan is at D.C. Police Headquarters for us tonight. There were several panels today at this community event in Southeast today, but the one where some of those key public safety leaders spoke was called Love and Order. The question they were essentially grappling with, the need for accountability, particularly for juveniles in the justice system, versus the need to try and get support services to them to prevent crimes in the future. Certainly a tough question. Here's the new deputy mayor for public safety. We need to help our young people to see their life matters and so do other people's, right? That we're part of a community. A couple notes from Chief Robert Conti today about juvenile crime. The number of juveniles arrested is actually down 35 percent from 2019 through 2022. What is going up, though, incrementally, Conti says, are first-time juvenile offenders who commit violent acts. Chief Conti, Attorney General Brian Schwab, the Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Lindsay Appia, all clear-eyed about these problems. But in terms of solutions, bolstering programs, getting an understanding of why a juvenile may be committing a crime and getting more involvement from the community, all key. Here's Chief Conti. Young people have to have opportunities, man. And if we don't create the opportunities for them, uh, who's going to do that? We have to show them the way. Uh, our adults uh, in this city, we have to recognize how talented our young people are, making sure that we're giving them a platform to really be creative in that space and do things that are productive. Social media, the number of guns, and the pandemic are also key reasons listed for some of the crime issues that we are seeing in the city. That was something that some of these public safety leaders said collectively as being part of the issue as well. Back to you. I've been arrested four or five times. I haven't stole nothing in a good minute. Actually, no, that's a lie. I think it was like last time I stole was a month. When you hit that police officer, would that scare you at all? Not really. But having all them guns pointing at me, not gonna lie, that was cute. I was going way over other miles per hour in that vehicle. <laughs> My dad, he tells me when you're in jail, sometimes it makes you feel like that's the only place you're safe, but that's quite opposite, really. I'll listen to him because he tries to control my life. You see it? It is a GPS home monitoring house arrest something box. And it um, also has a GPS on it because it wants to track me through school. I cut it off before. Not allowed to do that. <laughs> Thought I was going back to jail. I was going to make a run for it. Going back to jail ain't it, bro. The law. All these rules. I would do it regardless. Do that. Do it look like I go by the police? And I'll f these police up daily. It's not nothing new to me. I'm ready to be an adult. Sign me up. Look, I'm a kid, but I'm a grown man. Dead side. What's your biggest fear? That my biggest fear, he won't end up in jail, or he'll end up in a box. I'll be visiting him in a graveyard. And what do you think will bring that about? You think he's going to get in over his head, somebody's gonna kill him, you think he's gonna crash a car, overdose, what, what's your, how's it gonna happen? All the above. I had um, some drug dealers come up to me before I came here, told me that I need to keep my son away from the kids he's hanging out with because he got bounties on their head for going in. 
tonight at, at 6, night. giving inmates a new take on life after jail. Today, six men at Metro Corrections graduated from one of the jail's new programs. Alternatives to Criminal Thinking is what it's called. It's a six-month program designed to help improve relationships, build opportunities for employment, and values. WHAS 11's Alexis Jones and photojournalist Alyssa Newton were at today's ceremony where she talked with graduates. It's really great to see you all being here and showing your support. Take a look at Metro Corrections' newest graduates. Among them is 22-year-old Emmanuel Howard, who's looking forward to being released by the end of the year. I feel like I'm a better person. Emmanuel and six others received a diploma Friday for completing Alternatives to Criminal Thinking, a program dedicated to improving the lives of young men. Uh, I know my family members are proud because no one would have thought I would, you know, would change. Because, like, I've been, I done had a cycle about going back and forth and stuff like that, so just for me to take initiative and change for myself. I know they probably proud. Including his one-year-old daughter, who cheered him on from the audience. Life, in order for her to have a stable father in her life, I have to make a change, make commitment to the change, too. The program offers career development, education, and different forms of therapy to men ages 18 to 24. Mentor Shelton McElroy says this age range is a critical time. It's typically when many enter the correctional system. When these young men get the resources, that you end up saving the community lots of dollars and lots of hurt and pain and you contribute to an entire family every time you help one of these young men. He says the program not only helps inmates see who they can be, it helps lower violence in Louisville too. And I know that when they're sitting in an orange jumpsuit in a plastic chair, they don't know what the world has to offer. In Louisville, Alexis Jones, WHS 11 on your side. New tonight, the latest death at the Louisville Metro Department of Corrections. The jail sparked another protest outside the jail tonight, calling for more to be done to prevent deaths at our jail. 13 people have died in custody since 2021. The most recent, a 61-year-old man who was suffering from a medical emergency and later died at the hospital. Activists spoke and marched outside the jail tonight. WHS 1119's Bobby McSwine and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie were there covering it. And Bobby, what about the question of building a new jail? That was talked about tonight. Well, this topic has gotten a lot of traction over the past few months. An investigation into LMDC reports that the new jail will need a new location. The current building was made to be an office, but was instead used for the jail. Despite this, activists say the problem is much deeper than structural issues. Sometimes silence is the loudest response. Activists marching around Louisville Metro Department of Corrections Tuesday evening, carrying signs with the names of the 13 people who've died in LMDC since 2021. At the rally, protesters identified the latest death at the jail as 61-year-old Ishmael Worth Puckett. LMDC says he suffered a medical emergency, and despite quick efforts, he later died at U of L Hospital. Jail Director Jerry Collins says staffing has increased, and they're working with outside organizations to create more resources. We're going to do everything we can to to make this as safe as possible. But at the end of the day, just like in a, in um, any place in the city, you know. Tragedies happen sometimes. Protesters say change can't come fast enough, especially April Hearn, whose son is booked in the jail. Even though my son is a young black man and this was an older white man, I could still hear the anxiety in my son's voice. I can still hear the concern. Mama, am I safe? When am I going to get out of here? I need to go home. And despite the recent talk of the need for a new jail to properly house inmates, Hearn says that's not the answer. The focus needs to be on these bails that they said that people cannot afford. On WHAS 11 News earlier, new Metro Council President Marcus Winkler said a new facility is needed. We have poor line of sight for our staff. Um, you know, lots of interaction between staff and inmates. Collins agrees, but says he knows a new building isn't a cure-all. That would be years down the road, so what we have to do is focus on what we have right now, um, do everything we can, bring in um, every idea we can get, and we welcome that. Until then, these vigils and protest will continue. And as for staffing, Collins says the jail is still short about 70 officers, but in the coming weeks, they will have another lateral class and a regular academy class. Doug. Bobby, thank you. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg has previously said that building a new jail isn't a top priority, instead focusing on fixing the crisis inside the corrections system.
epidemic isn't just on the street, but also in our jails. Case in point, Rikers Island, New York City. It turned out to be the deadliest year for overdoses at Rikers in a decade, in no small part because of fentanyl. And the big question, how are the daily deadly drugs even getting into the jail? Here's seven on your side's investigative reporter, Dan Krauth. 19 deaths reported in the jail alone last year. We know at least three of those were fentanyl related. A new synthetic and addictive opioid where even a small amount can be deadly. We found it's getting in past the barbed wire fences in three ways, starting with the mailbox. Mixed in with the birthday cards, I miss you notes and holiday greetings was this, a children's Christmas drawing laced with fentanyl. Here's another, an I love you letter to an inmate on a plain piece of paper that tested positive. Even this, a Stephen King novel. The pages were soaked in fentanyl. Inmates rip off pieces of the paper and sell this to other inmates where it's either chewed up or smoked to get high. Correction officers say it has been misery trying to figure out a way to stop it. Books are for reading not for lacing with fentanyl. At a recent city hearing, the Department of Correction Commissioner Luis Molina said most of the drugs are being mailed into the facility. We are exploring all available measures to keep fentanyl and other drugs out of our facilities. He spoke in front of a criminal justice committee chaired by Carlina Rivera. He said something like there were 400 instances and he said, well, where's the data? She believes the city's not doing enough to stop it. We have to do something. This is a humanitarian crisis that is happening right here in New York City. In addition to the mail, people visiting inmates are also bringing it in. 56 people have been caught last year, along with two correction officers. We have zero tolerance for anyone who brings contraband into our jails. The jail's possible solution, hire a company to electronically scan all of the mail, and inmates can view that mail on an electronic tablet like this. You're still waiting on data on specific cases, and you do have concerns about the tablets. We want to make sure that, one, it's accessible and affordable, and two, that we're not removing one of, I think, the most human elements, that is tangible mail that comes in from your family members. She wants a universal policy for physically scanning everyone who enters the jail saying the overdose situation is just one of many problems that have to be fixed quickly inside the complex. It's absolutely a, a case of mismanagement. What we really want to see is a plan going forward. The commissioner says this isn't a problem unique to New York City, but jails across the country. They're training all correction officers on how to use Narcan, the drug that can help reverse an overdose, by this summer.